So yeah, as you can hear, it does make quite a difference actually. And uh, you know, although you only have three options given here to kind of shape your sound, it's still, you can do a lot with them. So let's check out the, uh, actually let's choose uh, I don't know, hard short for now. Have it reset. Um, yeah, so you can jump over to the effects section and we have a delay here and a reverb. So this is kept pretty simple as well, but these are actually pretty cool effects. So let's check out the delay here. And uh, you can choose different delay types over here. So there's a whole list, you know, and you have some pretty cool stuff in here and uh, like the the vintage ping pong or the fusion ping pong that's pretty cool even tape saturation uh, modern extreme diffusion cave you know all sorts of, of delays and um, they're all like kind of analog based though as you can see from the names so let's just actually leave modern bright for now and check this out um, then furthermore you have the sync option here, sync your delay to the timing, you know, to like either the beat, like quarter beat for example, or you can also do it in uh, milliseconds. So I prefer to use the, maybe let's put it at, I don't know, an eighth for now. And uh, over here with the feedback. You can choose how much feedback you're getting, so how much delay basically you're getting. And with the return knob, you just decide how loud that uh, feedback will be. So let's check it out. So yeah, okay, <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, running pretty long and it's getting kind of annoying, I guess, but uh, you get the idea, right? You know what's, what a delay is doing now, kind of like giving you that echo. And now let's just actually try one more, maybe the vintage detune. So yeah, that's pretty cool actually, as you could hear, you know, like the, uh, the delay is like the tune, like, you know, the pitch is different from the, from the original signal. So that kind of gives it more, more width, uh, excuse me. And, um, it's giving you kind of a pretty cool, cool sound to add to. So yeah, let's take a look at the uh, reverb over here. So we have four different reverbs, IRC, room, hall, and plate. And actually this IRC one is the most limited one. So you can choose from, you know, different spaces here, basically. So like concert halls, cathedrals, chambers. What else we got? Dab, vocal, something like that. Cascading down, crystal caves. Uh, yeah, so. Let's just listen to this one actually. So yeah, this reverb has a pre, like it has its own sound to it, I guess. So let's take a look at your room reverb. So, you know, this is all of the other reverbs give you those options you see with the room re reverb. Um, you can choose different rooms over here again, small, medium and large. And you can set the pre-delay, so 
when the uh, reverb sound will be will be more noticeable I guess like when you start to hear it and then the time for you know how long the uh, the reverb is and the high cut of course that goes down to 2 kilohertz and then the return up again for you know the volume of the reverb so I don't know let's keep this rather short it's pretty delay the time actually let's try a really long time I cut it to kilohertz it's fine so yeah let's check this out room large and let's do so this was room large a so let's do room large b So and you know these are obviously like these are the room settings like with the room large A. I've changed them of course so it did sound not as the preset. So anyways, um, yeah. So you have all kinds of uh, delays and reverbs in this plugin. So let's try a small, actually a medium, played medium B here. Cool, so yeah guys, that's it pretty much for Mole Flux. Uh, we went over everything this instrument does and can do. And uh, like I said in the beginning, it's kept fairly simple, but it's a really neat and nice instrument, I, I think. And you know, the quality of these samples is very high. Like it's actually sounding really nice and kind of warm and everything. So. And the effects are great too, actually. They've done a pretty good job on that. So yeah, let's take a look at the at the Mollet Flux one. This was a single one. No, I do not want to save the instrument. Uh, here we go. So yeah, like I said, so this is basically the multi version of uh, the Molly Flux, and uh, as you can see, it's kind of like the same base, I guess. So you have your instruments here, and uh, you know you can choose from the same instruments and the same playing styles, and just combine them all into one sound. But you don't have to have like six instruments. You can also say none, and then that slot is empty. So, uh, let me just turn off the effects here. So, okay. Then over here in the middle, this is basically where you choose your arpeggiator. So you, know, you can even filter by like basic arp, uh, the feel like eighth or sixteenth or triplets, the meter four four. Uh, yeah, and so on. So, you know, pretty, pretty basic. It tells you here, ARP 16, 32, Flux, Flux Morph. And it gives you like all kinds of different uh, ARPs. Here's an 8th to 16th. And so on. So, uh, we'll uh, hear a couple of those here in a minute. Um, then over here, next to the name and the well the instrument and the playing style you have the octave so you can have it play an octave down or even two or an octave up or two octaves up so even three four how high does this go yeah four so four is the maximum and minus four is the minimum yeah and then over here you have your sequencer basically so your arp and this is where you 
punch in your steps. You just click in here and you can change it. And uh, let's actually do it over here. You can solo it. So this is it. Uh, here. And this is kind of with the uh, with the arpeggiator on. So yeah, you can you know just punch your steps in here basically. Um, you can fill in the steps. So. If you just want to do some quick editing, this is actually great. And you know, as you can see, it jumps from uh, it jumps every four bars, every four steps is a new section. And uh, yeah, so this lets you do some pretty quick editing. And okay, the velocity is a little, it's too much. Uh, so yeah, okay, that was Phil. Over here you can choose the way it goes, like the arpeggiator, if you want it to go up, down, zigzag, down, move out, move in, move out and in, whatever, like there are different styles you can just try and listen to. Uh, yeah, well it's only playing this one, that's why it's not really working. Uh, yeah, you can skip one. Just skip it. You can have it play, you know, only the lowest, the lowest two, the middle, top two, top three, and just the top one, like the top note. Um, then here the octave range, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, which is pretty much uh, uh, similar to uh, this one, but this one gives you like the bass, basically, and this is for the ARP. And uh, if you wanted to repeat, you can have a repeat up to four times. Then down here, this is where it actually gets really interesting, because here you can set the length. So if you only want it to be a six step sequence and you rate, and that's what I mean by interesting, because you know, with 132, that's always, it of course runs a lot faster than at one sixth or whatever it was. So let's check it out. It's not, oh, oh no, I was in the wrong, in the wrong one. There's no instrument in the first sec, in the first uh, slot. So, okay, let's do it here then. Solo. So yeah, you guys get the idea. Um, then you can tell it when to reset, so like at one bar, two bars, or no reset. Then it runs just through, as you can. Like you can see the ARP going with those lights indicated down here, right? So with no reset it runs until the end, basically. And with one bar reset, it will reset after each bar, and two bar reset after every two bars. So yeah, then you can, you know, we have the length at a six here, so you can double it with the with a click on times two or you know only do half of it divided by two so it's really 